How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? This is Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. We are talking about the HomePod. Please excuse my voice. I do have a cold right now, but I wanted to get this video out so you guys could know how I felt about the HomePod. So we're going to talk about 10 features. The first feature here is the color options. You get a white and you get a space gray color option. The white does attract dirt pretty easily, so keep that in mind. The second thing that I like about the HomePod is its design. It is a very well-designed speaker, as you can see here. It has that nice fabric on the outside. Uh, you have a non-removable power cable that is covered in sort of a fabric material as well. Uh, even the cable itself aligns to the Apple logo on the bottom of the unit, as you can see there. On top, you have your touch panel for controlling Siri and for controlling volume. It feels like plastic, but I believe it's glass. And you can see just how small this thing is. This is the Apple TV remote. Yeah, and that speaks for itself. It's a very small unit. It's gonna be able to easily blend in and fit in anywhere in your house. So the build quality is, in a word, impressive. The first thing that stands out to you is when you pick it up. It is very, very heavy, much heavier than you would think. The next thing that you'll notice is that the speaker grill isn't just in one spot, but it's 360 degrees around the HomePod. You have this sort of fabric material that wraps all the way around, gives it a very clean look. The power cable, like I mentioned, is covered in fabric as well. Unlike most Apple products though, the cable is not removable, so keep that in mind. And on top you have the touch panel and on bottom you have a non-slip surface. So let me just briefly walk you through setup. When you first turn it on, you'll hear that little tone and then Siri walks you through the setup process. Hi, I'm Siri. Welcome to HomePod. You can't tell, but I'm waving. To get my attention, say, hey Siri. Let's try it. Say, hey Siri, what can you do? Hey Siri, what can you do? I can do lots of things like turn on the lights, give you a news update, and tell you about the weather. Now you try. Say, hey Siri, play some music. Hey Siri, play some music. Okay, here's a personal radio station built just for you. So as you can see, very simple setup process. Now the biggest software feature, obviously, with the HomePod is Apple Music support, and it's excellent. Hey Siri, play songs from the 70s. Now playing the 70s radio. Hey Siri, play songs from 1985. Playing 1985's top 25 hits. Hey Siri, play my Jeff playlist. Playlist Jeff now playing. Hey Siri, play NPR News. Here's the latest news from NPR. Live from NPR News in Washington. Hey Siri, play ESPN News. Here's the latest news from ESPN. Hey Siri, play Beats One Radio. Now tuning in to Beats One, my favorite radio station on earth. Hey Siri, play something upbeat. This music should get your gumption up. Hey Siri, play something for concentration. These arrangements should make your attention indivisible. Hey Siri, play 9 to 5 Max Happy Hour Podcast. Okay, 9 to 5 Mac Happy Hour Podcast coming up. 9 to 5 Mac Happy Hour is sponsored by Monoware. Stay. Hey Siri, play music I might like. Okay. I think you might enjoy starting with some Michael Jackson. Hey Siri, play Michael Jackson's Greatest Hits. Okay, playing playlist Michael Jackson Essentials. So if you want to control playback using your iPhone, you can simply open up Control Center and then open up the music widget, and then you'll see your HomePod, and you could just tap on that, control playback if you wish. You can also control the volume if you want to do that, just like that. And if you tap the name of the song or the album artwork within the widget, it's going to open up the Apple Music interface and you can control playback using Now Playing. Uh, you can even play additional songs if you want to do so. So say I wanted to play a different song, just tap on that song and it'll start playing back on the HomePod. Super simple, super easy. Now the HomePod does support iCloud Music Library. Let me give you a demonstration. So I'm searching for a song here. That song is not on Apple Music, but if I tap my library in search, you can see that that song is there. So that is in iCloud Music Library. So I can play that back. Hey Siri, play Beach Star High. 
Beach Star High versus Verbal from Mflow. Bye. Adjapay now playing. Simple. Now, the most impressive thing, I think everyone agrees with this, is that the sound quality of the HomePod defies what you would think a speaker of this size would be able to output. Uh, now, that said, it is not like, it isn't magic, right? It's, it's still a very small speaker um, and it still has limitations. However, for what it is, for its size, it is very impressive. Uh, just not a lot there, yet Apple has jammed seven tweeters in this thing. It's jammed an impressive sounding woofer, and unsurprisingly, it does tend to favor bass a little bit in my opinion. It's not overwhelmingly bassy, uh, but it does tend to favor bass. It doesn't sound unnatural. You still get really nice instrument separation. You get really nice high ends. The mid-range isn't as great, but I still find it very impressive for its size. So now I just wanted to show you guys what type of air the HomePod is pushing out. Just, I think it's at 50% right now. Um, it's a, not an incredibly bassy song, but even at 50% volume on a song that isn't like super bassy, you can see it's still moving some air quite nicely. And the woofer is pointed upward, so that's where you're going to get the most air movement. Now, Apple says that the HomePod is able to automatically, dynamically calibrate itself uh, to sound the best no matter its environment. So it uses the accelerometer, it uses the built-in microphones to calculate where it is in the room, and then it will adjust itself acoustically to sound the best based on its environment. Now, this appears to be quite subtle. I didn't really notice much of a difference depending on where I place the HomePod in my small area and that could be just because it's a small area so I'm still going to do some testing on this to see how it works but to be honest it sounded good wherever I placed it so that could be attributable to the auto calibration. HomeKit support is one of the HomePod's big features and it works well. Hey Siri turn the heat to 72 degrees. Okay. I set the home to 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Hey Siri, turn off the office string lights. All set. Hey Siri, turn off the office Hugh Go. Done. Hey Siri, turn off the office Luxo lamp. All set. Hey Siri, turn off the office light strip. Okay, there you go. Hey Siri, turn off all the office lights. Done. Hey Siri, turn on, on all the office lights. All set. No doubt, that is super convenient. Now another one of the most impressive things about the HomePod is its ability to use its far-field microphones to pick up my voice over ambient noise and over music playback, even when I'm talking really, really low. So the HomePod is about 10 feet away in this example, and I'm gonna talk really, really low, and it's going to be able to respond. Listen up. Hey Siri, what's the temperature in Chicago? Pretty cold in Chicago, Illinois. 21 degrees. Okay, let's try it again. Hey Siri, what time is it? The time is 5.54 p.m. So I was basically whispering in that example, but how does it perform when music is playing back? Let's listen. It's 5.55 p.m. Hey Siri, what time is it? The time is 5.55 p.m. Pretty impressive. But of course, we know it's not all gravy when it comes to the HomePod. There are some definite flaws that stand out, some like a sore thumb. Number one, the lack of stereo playback. That seems utterly ridiculous to ship uh, the HomePod without this feature. We know it's coming in the future, but it's not here now. So if you buy two HomePods, you're not gonna be able to link them together and play back your music in stereo. Just seems ridiculous, to be honest. And perhaps even more egregious for some customers is the lack of multi-room audio support out of the gate. Now, again, this is coming in the future, but right now out of the box, there is no multi-room audio support for the HomePod. Now there is no auxiliary input for the HomePod. Not entirely surprising from the same company that removed the headphone jack from the iPhone, but still, you need to be aware of it if you're not aware of it, because say you wanted to hook up your fancy turntable to your HomePod to take advantage of the awesome sound that it possesses, you can't. 
you can't do it at all and you never will be able to because there simply is no auxiliary connection to be found. There is no third party music support for the HomePod. Now, this isn't as bad as it sounds because you can still airplay, say you wanted to airplay uh, Pandora on your HomePod, you can still do that. You can airplay Spotify on your HomePod. The thing is you have to manually do that using airplay on your iPhone or iPad. You can't just ask Siri to play back your favorite Pandora playlist. Hey Siri, play the Postal Service Radio on Pandora. I can't play from Pandora, but here's some music by the Postal Service from Apple Music. Now those things were negatives, but the lack of multi-user support is a real bummer to me because if I have personal requests enabled, it means that literally anyone in the vicinity of my HomePod can make a request on my behalf because there's only one account per speaker and Siri does not differentiate one voice from another. So that means that anyone can ask Siri to read my text messages or ask Siri to send a text message on my behalf. Notice. So I could say, hey Siri, read my latest text message. I found your most recent message from Jeff. What's up? You guys subscribe to our channel. Would you like to reply? No. Okay. But anyone can make this request. Hey Siri, read my latest text messages. I found your most recent message from Jeff. What's up? You guys subscribe to our channel. Would you like to reply? Yeah, if you live in a household with lots of people, that could be a problem. But the HomePod is a new product and Apple will no doubt iterate on the HomePod and make it perhaps a much different and much improved device than it is today. But even now, it is very impressive. With sound quality that outright defies its form factor, HomeKit support that's extremely useful, and tight integration with Apple Music. Obviously, Siri is quite behind when compared with Alexa and with Google Assistant, but at least those are things that Apple can fix in software. And hopefully, the HomePod is enough motivation for them to really invest in Siri and make it a better voice assistant. Because if it does, the HomePod has the potential to be the best little cylinder you can buy. Let me know what you think in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.